today I wanted to talk about some interesting things I learned about importing paid invoices. And in this example, these were employee expenses that were paid either via cash or a, a check that was already issued or via credit card, the employee's uh, company P card. So in this case, we have an invoice for $78.54 that was paid via the P card. And so if we enter that amount on the credit card amount field, you'll notice I've selected P card as the card name and there's a payment number here. And this was a little confusing for me. I, I hadn't worked with this field before. So you'll notice that there's a payment number field here, which you think, oh, that's a payment number. But if we go back to some other transaction and that is not a credit card, and let's say we wanna pay this via cash. 432.7. Okay, so now our checkbook ID appears and we have cash. Notice the payment number here starts with a 5678. And so that payment number comes from Tools, Setup, Purchasing, Payables. And if you go into the Options window, you'll notice our next payment number is starts with a 5, ends with 679 in this case because 678 is issued. Notice the voucher number starts with a one. And so I had to number them differently just to keep track of what was going on. And if we go back to our payables transaction entry window, you'll see the cash entry is getting issued with a payables payment number. Whereas if we go back to our credit card amount, oops, our credit card amount is not being issued a payment number, it's being issued a voucher number. And so given that this is a credit card transaction, it's going to be billed through the P-card vendor, this makes sense, but the field name doesn't change, it's still called payment number, so that can be a little bit confusing. So that was one thing I learned, I've just never had to deal with um, pre importing prepaid expenses before either cash or credit card. So. I had to work around that for the integration. And then one other interesting thing I found is if we go back to our cash transaction, so if we're paying by cash, it uses this checkbook ID, everything looks good. And if we go into distributions and if we default, you'll see that we have our purchasing account and we debit our expense account and that is a purchasing distribution type. and the cash account for the cash disbursement credits the cash account of the checkbook ID. Totally makes sense. However, come on, analytical accounting. If we go back to our credit card, sure, we're paying by credit card, there's our P card, there's our voucher number, not our payment number, and we go to distributions. Notice that the distribution type for the offset account to the expense account, our credit gets a distribution type of cash, even though it's not actually a cash disbursement, it's a P card or a credit card. And then the account that is used, what would normally be say an AP account of the invoice, is the AP account for the P card vendor or the credit card vendor ID. So that gets defaulted in here, or in this case, because I'm integrating this data, I have to look it up and insert the appropriate AP account for the credit card vendor. So a little bit of a twist there. You have to remember for if you're importing your credit card uh, invoices that are paid by credit card, fully paid, you're going to have a cash distribution type and you're going to have an AP account here for the P card vendor or the credit card vendor. So those two things were interesting twists for this integration of employee expenses that were sometimes prepaid either via cash or credit card. Hope that was helpful.